Now to calculate the rate of precession, we're going to use a gyroscope rather than a spinning ring. So you've probably seen gyroscopes before. They're these sort of model of the atom looking crazy things. And I want to take a minute to show you one and make sure you think about the right part. So in the center is the big heavy spinning disk. That's the part we care about. That has a big angular momentum that points out like that, as you would expect for a spinning disk. These weird circular parts on the outside are really just the mount. It's called a gimbal mount. It's meant to uh, keep the gyroscope as an isolated system. So it's a very you know, uh, loose mount that lets it turn really nicely around specific axes. Okay, but really what you care about in terms of the physics is not the gimbal mount, it's the actual spinning uh, uh, disk. This is the one I'm going to use for demonstrations. This is a small high-speed gyroscope. Its mount isn't a gimbal mount. It doesn't allow it to turn. It's going to turn around this little ball on the bottom. And we'll have other gimbal mounts for it later. But anyway, the main thing I want you to understand is when I draw the gyroscope, all I'm going to draw is the disk. All we care about is it's a disk with a big angular momentum, and it's allowed to turn however it wants. So let's have a look. Here we go. So as I just promised, there's the gyroscope. It's just a disk and it's spinning and has a big L. And it's got some radius big R and it's got some mass like that. And it's spinning um, from some point and that'll physically be a point later that it's gonna be a point of contact. But for now, we're gonna say it's a distance away R. And we're gonna put a Z axis here because what we wanna calculate is how fast does it process around that axis. And the rest is the same. Remember, R is to the center of mass. So there's R. This part's just like the ring. And there's mg. Therefore, it's feeling a torque R cross mg, right, going into the board like that. Torque around that point. So that part's all the same. So let's see. So we know that our gravitational torque is dl dt. That's how this all got started. And we know that we were sort of looking down on it this way, so we can draw those vectors. But now we're going to draw them a little different. Let's see. We're, we know we have an L like this. We could call that L final. And have an L like this. We could call that L initial. And before we thought about how when those are really small, then it's basically circular motion because the DLs are always perpendicular. So that's still true. It is just a circular rotation of this L vector. But we're drawing it a little bigger so we can think about what angle do we go through when that happens. We're going to call that phi. We'll go through a little angle d phi. And uh, the DL vector looks something like that. So I think that's most of what we need. Also, we're going to think about how high it's sitting theta. Okay, so there's two angles to keep up with. So theta is how far it is above horizontal. Uh, and then phi is just how far it's going around this circle. Okay, So we've got all those. And uh, one other relationship we're going to need is for little small uh, d phi's and l's, we can use the arc length to get a relationship among these. And you know the arc length, in this case, the dl is like the arc length of this vector diagram. And it's equal to l, initial or final. It's constant. We'll just call it l times d phi. Now we don't want vectors on there, it's magnitudes. So the length of the DL is just the, basically the radius of the circle L times the angle d phi. Okay, so now we want the precession rate. Let's see if we can calculate it. Well, if we look at this diagram, we know what it is. It's d phi dt. How much does this angle change in the time dt that corresponds to DL? So the precession rate we just define as d phi dt. Okay. And now we want to use our thing that we learned from geometry. What is d phi in terms of these angular momentums? It's dl over big L. So the little arc length that moved over basically the radius of the circle. dl over L. Okay. And we'll just keep dt in the bottom. dl over L times dt. But if we look at that, we realize, well, dl was over l, then it's over dt. But what about dl over dt? Right? What is dl over dt? Oh, that's just the torque is dl over dt. It's the, val the magnitude of the torque if we're not doing directions right now. 
So then we know that it's just the gravitational torque is the only torque in the problem. So what this shows us is that the precession rate is the torque divided by how much angular momentum the object has. So the harder you pull on it, the faster it goes around. That kind of makes sense. But also, the bigger the momentum it has, the slower it goes around, because right? it's hard to change something's momentum. So in some level, this makes sense sort of intuitively. But let's look, and now let's plug in uh, terms from our own problem here. Let's see if we can get the actual precession rate in terms of this gyroscope. Because this has all been general. That's true for anything. Right? But now let's look in terms of the gyroscope. So the torque applied by gravity is uh, r times mg times the sine of the angle between them, if we're just doing the magnitude. So r mg times the sine of the angle between those vectors is what? Let's see, if we put this tail to tail, uh, then it must be uh, theta plus 90 degrees. So the sine of theta plus 90. If you can't see that, just draw yourself some triangles. You'll see it eventually. Let's see if we put a line here, that would also be theta. Okay, so that's the torque for this problem. And then we need um, L for this problem. Um, and what is L? L is uh, I omega, right? So this is a disk, it has some uh, moment of inertia I which we could plug in and say it's 1 half m r squared, but then that's a disk of different r from that r, so it's not worth it. So we'll just call it i. It's a disk with some moment of inertia i. And uh, times omega, L is i omega. But we need one more term. That's the magnitude of the total angular momentum. We're actually thinking about the projection of that here, because that's the thing going around in a circle. Right? If we want to project this into a plane perpendicular to the z-axis, then we actually care about L cosine. So we put a cosine theta here. And this is sort of the, remember, this is the easier version of angular momentum. We're not doing the full vector calculus version here. OK, so let's see. We do that. And then we say, oh, wait, sine 90 plus theta is cosine theta. Ah, see these go away. We could have left them both out and got the same answer, but I wanted to show them to you. So then the precession rate that we care about, d phi dt, the thing we're trying to think, how fast does it go around? rmg over i omega. We're keeping in mind r here is how long this rod is or how long this distance is. It's not the radius of the disk. The radius of the disk is hiding inside of that moment. So the only way we can really demo this, test this, is to spin up our little one, our little uh, gyroscope and maybe see which one of these we can vary. Okay, so first let me just spin it here. So. And here it is again, and it's got this little motorized uh, spinner here. So I attach it and turn it on, and it'll get it going. It takes it a minute. Right. As you probably know, gyroscopes are used in navigation to keep planes and boats and missiles on course. So if you ever watch a movie about like the end of the world or nuclear war or something, it's always, you know, one side is attacked, and the other side has to decide, are they going to respond? And there's always that delay. We have to wait. We can't respond for six minutes. Missiles can't go for six minutes, or the fighter jets can't go for six minutes. What is that six minutes? It's doing exactly this. It's spinning up the gyroscopes for the navigation. That's usually the high dramatic moment. Okay. Not quite as much drama here, but, but you get the idea. OK, so. You can barely tell, because it's such a nice gyroscope, but now the brass disk is moving very fast. So a very large angular momentum. So I'm just going to let it sit on my hand, and it'll have nice low friction. And you can see it goes around. There's a precession that we wanted to see. Pretty slow. Now what can we change here? We can't change g. We can't change m. We can't change the disk properties. We can't change omega. I spun it up. But we can change r. So little r is the distance from the contact to the center of mass of that disk. So you can see that's going kind of slow. So what I can do is make r a lot bigger. All right, so I've got this other thing, and I'll try to screw it on before omega changes too much due to friction. 
And now, with an R that's two or three times bigger, oh, let me get it straight up, you can see it goes around quite a bit faster. Bigger R, uh, bigger precession frequency, or uh, faster rate of precession. Whoa, you don't want to drop it. All right. And we'll see if we can think of some other ways that we could vary some of those properties to let you see how the precession changes.